Hey, this is Digital by Computing. We're going through the steps on how to speed up the boot time of your Mac computer. So we're doing this on 10.11, which is El Capitan. Uh, it, some of these steps will work on earlier versions, but this is what we're gonna do for this newer version on the Mac uh, for boot time. I hope you like my Christmas tree. Let's go through them now. So, first thing you wanna be doing is clearing up your login items. So on your Mac, you'll find that there's a whole bunch of apps that run in the background that actually start up without you knowing. So these are things like iTunes maybe running in the background. There could be some other tasks running as well. And removing some of these will speed up the boot time of your Mac. So to do this, you go into your system preferences. Okay, I've got it here in my dock. You can also access it by going into the start menu, uh, into, the, into the Apple menu, sorry. On the, uh, on the you can tell I've been working on Windows as well as well. Let's not talk about Windows, this is a Mac tutorial. Uh, yeah, go into the Apple and then to System Preferences there as well. So let's just open up System Preferences. You'll get this window pop up and you go into Users and Groups. You'll see my name there and you wanna select Login Items over here. Now, these items will open automatically when you log in. So all this stuff will open in the background without you even knowing, all right? So this is stuff that's been maybe running for a long time and it starts up every single time your Mac starts and it's running in the background, potentially slowing things down. So if you don't need them, remove them. Messages, iPhoto, dictionary, calculator. I want these three to start. So I haven't actually removed the apps, I've just removed them from starting automatically. So the apps are still located inside your applications on your Mac, but I've just removed them from here just so that they don't start up when your Mac starts up. So that's the first thing that we can look at. Second thing is to clear up disk space on your Mac, okay? Over time, you'll start accumulating a whole bunch of files. So going into your, into your Finder, for example, and going into Applications, Removing apps in here that you don't need. Documents, removing stuff in here into the movies, etc. Removing old stuff that you don't need. Essentially, the more space you have on your Mac, the quicker it's going to run. So I've got 249 gig free, more than enough for now. But if you start getting, you know, into the 20, 30, maybe 80 gig free, start looking at reducing some of the space uh, because the more space you have, the less clutter you have on your Mac, the quicker it'll run in general. Another thing you can do is open up what's called the activity monitor. Again, go up to here and we type in activity monitor and enter. Now, what this is doing is you can see it has a, uh, a summary of every process that is running on my Mac. Okay, so every single program, every activity that is running on my Mac is documented in here, everything, okay? Including system files, including stuff that you're not even having open, but the, the system uses for, you know, for booting up, etc., is all running on here. Shows you what threads, what ports it's using, who the user is, etc., etc. But then more importantly, it shows you, you can actually browse by CPU and memory, how much CPU and memory is being used for each app. So you can sort it by CPU, okay? So as you can see at the moment, 38% of my CPU is being used by QuickTime Player. That is because I'm recording this fancy video for all you folks. Otherwise that would be, you know, it wouldn't exist, right? So uh, look through here. If there are apps in here that you don't even know what they are, you know, uh, probably don't touch them because you may be destroying something if you go ahead and you know close it. You can actually select an app and just manually force shut it, right? Uh, but if there are apps in there that you do recognize and they are running, uh, you may not want them to be running. So you maybe just be, you know, monitor this, monitor the memory usage, okay? Again, QuickTime is using a fair bit. Um, own Cloud, Safari is using a fair bit. So as you can see, Safari is not even open. I don't have a window open, but it's running in my background, but it's running at 34 uh, meg of my memory. So I can go ahead and close my Safari. All right. Safari is now gone. So I've essentially just gotten back that 34 meg of memory that it was using, okay? So that's gonna make it run a little bit better as well, all right? Activity monitor, great, great tool. Using your disk utility 
to uh, perform some first aid on your Mac, okay? So we are running uh, 10.11, which is El Capitan. So this may look slightly different on your version, uh, but let's go through this. You just go into the spotlight on the top right and type in disk. It'll come up disk utility and press enter. So this is my pretty Macintosh hard drive. It's got it nicely color coded here. So this is actually going to help with knowing where is all your data stored? You know, how much apps do I, how much, you know, how much data, how much, how many gigabytes is apps using? How much gigabytes is uh, photos using, audio, etc. Uh, so you can then go in and clear that stuff down. You can see that I'm pretty full, but I'm not too bad. So what you want to do, select Macintosh hard drive. Yours may be, you know, a different name, for example, and you want to click on first aid. Now, I'm not going to run this now because it will slow down my Mac while it's performing this, but something that I'd recommend, do it pretty regularly. As you can see, first aid will check the volume for errors. It will then report uh, repair the volume if necessary. So do this every, every week if you can, every couple of weeks, at least every month. It'll give it a good cleanup, remove any old junk. Uh, remove any old temp files, any any uh, permissions issues, it's going to fix that as well. So disk utility and running first aid is going to be brilliant. Clearing your cache. Okay, so we've looked at clearing the cache on your Safari. Your Mac also has a whole bunch of cache on it, okay? So cache is essentially uh, a file gets opened up, right? In Safari, for example, it creates a little cache file, all right? It, it, they're there to make things run a little bit quicker so that when you open up things, uh, it runs a little bit faster. It sort of caches that um, that memory, I guess, slightly of, of an application. So that the next time you open it, it's going to run slightly better. Uh, over time, they can accumulate. Over the years, they can really accumulate. And clearing them out can generally speed things up. You'll start fresh. Any applications that you've you know long since deleted the caches will still be there. So you wanna go ahead and delete all this old stuff and start fresh from time to time. To do this, on your finder here, there are two types, right? There is, there's, a, there's a user cache and there's also a system cache, okay? We're gonna go through how to delete both of them. So if you click on the go and go to go to folder, we wanna to go to two folders. These are the library folders. You'll find that by default when you open up your finder, Library is not listed. Now I have library listed because I put it in there. Okay, yours won't be there. But the easiest way to access this is you go, as I said, go, go to folder. We'll close out of here. And you do a forward slash library. And okay. That is going to open up your, uh, essentially your system library. Okay. And in here you've got a folder called cache. Okay whole bunch of stuff in here. We've had this for a while. You can go ahead, select all of that, and delete it. It's gonna ask for your credentials, put that in, and then it'll go and trash that, okay? The other one is your user cache. Go, go to folder. At the start of this, you wanna put that little squiggly line. All right, this is above your tab key on your keyboard. You got your keyboard, that's the tab key. Maybe backwards, because this is a video. Right, maybe on that side. That's right here, the squiggly line next to the number one, um, holding down shift and that button will put that squiggly line in there. Uh, and library, go. That'll open up my user library. In here I've got caches as well. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. All right, a whole bunch of stuff. Same deal, select it all, you can do command A. Select everything. Again, delete it. Okay, we'll delete all of your cache. All right, that, do it from time to time. Not that often, uh, do it really if it's running really sluggish. Yeah? If your Mac is running really sluggish, go ahead and clear that out. Otherwise, it's not really that important to do it. So just monitor that one. Cool. Next thing is to clear the NVRAM. Now, what this is gonna do, this is gonna reset a whole bunch of system properties on your Mac. Uh, you, I can't show you how to do this on here. Essentially, it requires you to reboot your Mac. If you look at the description down the bottom of my video, I've got a link there on how to reset the NVRAM. Do this if your Mac is running terribly slow, if you're having performance issues, if you're having errors popping up, 
clearing the NVRAM will speed up some things. It clears a whole bunch of system caches uh, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff, okay? So run this uh, very, very rarely, right? Only if you really need to. It's not gonna break your Mac, right? So don't be scared of, of running it. It's not gonna really affect anything, but it's recommended to do it if you're having serious performance issues. Um, essentially what will happen is if you ring up Apple and, you, and you're calling Apple and you're saying, hey Apple, uh, I'm, having issues with, which, you know, I'm having issues with my Mac, it's running slow. One of the things that they may say to you is try resetting the NVRAM. So look at that description down the bottom uh, on how to reset that NVRAM. So what you'll find is when clearing your recycling bin, once you've, um, you know, once you've moved the caches into your, into your trash, you'll find that some files are locked, okay? And this is because your Mac is using some of these files. So generally giving your Mac a reboot and then clearing your recycling bin, right, your trash, uh, will clear that out as well. Uh, the other thing is increasing your RAM. This is, this is more like a worst case scenario sort of thing, right? You've tried all of your software, you've tried everything else. You've even, you've even restarted your Mac, you, you've reinstalled the operating system and it's still running really, really poorly. Uh, there's really two options, right? The first thing would be uh, increase the RAM of your Mac. If that still doesn't fix it, you need a new Mac because it's just running pretty bad, all right? Increase the RAM. Apple, about this Mac, will show you uh, information about my Mac, okay? So this is a iMac late 2013 and I've got 16 gig worth of, of uh, RAM or memory. If I go into memory, I can see in here that I've got four slots each with four gig of RAM. Your Mac contains four gig of RAM each, which accepts 1600 DDR3, or memory slots are currently in use. Now, this particular uh, model of Mac, I know can be upgraded even more. So I can, instead of these four gigs, I can put eight gigs in there. So I can take it up a heck of a lot more, up to 32 gig of RAM, all right? Or even more potentially with, with 16 gig uh, uh, um, RAM sticks, okay? So your Mac, uh, check in here to see if you've got available slots. If you do, excellent, go and, t go and buy some RAM. Take the RAM or t take the model, right? Make a model of this, go to your computer store or your Apple center and ask them, hey, I need a uh, sodium of 1600 megahertz DDR3 memory, for example. The easiest thing you can do is uh, potentially take out the RAM that you've currently got in your Mac and take that with you to the store. So they can actually physically see the RAM stick and not give you the incorrect incorrect type, yeah? I do have another video on how to replace uh, the RAM on your Mac, so uh, you can look at that video for the guide on how to do that. But increasing your RAM will also increase um, the speed of your Mac as well. Um, I've just shown you a few simple tricks on how to do it manually, that way you don't have to go and buy some software. But yeah, look, that should help, hopefully it does, uh, and that is it, all right? So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, Digital Byte Computing, for a whole bunch of more videos. Thanks for watching.